straight ahead on OC News. Government employees might soon be getting IOUs instead of paychecks. We'll have the latest on the government shutdown. Based over a decade ago, what is the latest on the so-called great part? And a little hip-hop makes the healthy vegetable go, go down a whole lot smoother. OC News starts right now. Hello and welcome to OC News. I'm Shay Ross. And I'm Sharda Avalone. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. Our top story, new developments in the small plane that crashed at the Santa Monica Airport. It's believed that the CEO of a local construction company and his son were on board the plane. There were no survivors. CEO Mark Benjamin with Morley Builders and his son Luke were believed to be on the plane. The twin engine Cessna crashed Sunday night around 6.20. The plane touched down and then crashed into a hangar and burst into flames. The U.S. The U.S. government that could mean a huge problem not only for government workers who might not get paid but could be an issue for the best of us who rely on government services. CNN has the latest. The clock is ticking to midnight and barring an unexpected 11th hour deal, major parts of the federal government will be closed for business. If the United States Congress does not fulfill its responsibility to pass a budget today, much of the United States government will be forced to shut down tomorrow. So how did we get here? House Republicans are drawing a line in the sand over Obamacare. Their latest budget includes a one-year suspension of the health care law. Insurance exchange is set to go online on Tuesday, but that plan is unlikely to pass the Democratic-controlled Senate. It's time for the Senate to listen to the American people, just like the House has listened to the American people and to pass a one-year delay of Obamacare. Democrats say that's a non-starter. The Affordable Care Act is moving forward. That funding is already in place. You can't shut it down. Wall Street already down just because of the potential of a shutdown. And if there's no deal, the estimated losses is in the billions. The American people are worried about their job. They're worried about their incomes rising. As for the American people, a majority do not want to see a shutdown. 68% say a federal shutdown for a few days is a bad thing. And when it comes to the new health care law, 57% say they oppose it. And that's why we're here in Washington. I'm Shannon Travis reporting. What should be a pay playful rivalry has once turned tragic. CNN's Dan Simon with the story. Fan rivalries can be intense, leading to all-out brawls like this one at a San Francisco 49ers-Oakland Raiders game. And men aren't the only ones fighting. This happened at an L.A. Clippers-Utah Jazz basketball game. The latest violence centers around the storied baseball rivalry between the Los Angeles Dodgers and San Francisco Giants. And this time, it turned deadly. I just saw the swinging and the yelling and just like arms flying everywhere. The police started showing up and I looked and I saw a person laying on the ground. Police say it happened a few hours after Wednesday night's game a few blocks from the ballpark. A 24-year-old Jonathan Denver was stabbed and killed wearing Dodgers clothes. This picture taken at the game with his father, a Dodgers security guard. The fact that anybody got in any sort of a beef over the Giants and the Dodgers and somebody lost their, lost their life, uh, it, it's just senseless. A 21-year-old suspect was arrested and charged with homicide. Investigators say he was part of a group that wasn't even at the game. It's not clear yet how the fight started. Two years ago, the rivalry led to the beating of a 42-year-old paramedic and father. Giants fan Brian Stowe was critically injured when he was attacked by two Dodgers fans. He suffered brain damage and will never fully recover. Experts say fights like this are usually fueled by alcohol. When you combine passion for your sports team, too much to drink, and too many people, you've got a recipe for disaster. San Francisco's police chief has a message for fans everywhere. Just be respectful of each other when you go to these games. And remember, 
It's a game. Dan Simon, CNN, San Francisco. Here to talk to us about the increasing violence in sports rivalry is Titan Sports Recap executive producer Alyssa Santiago. Thank you for joining us, Alyssa. Thanks, Shay. It seems that fans have been becoming more violent over the past few years. Why do you think this is? To be honest, I think that it's the tailgating aspect as well as just simple rivalry and competitiveness. Everyone's competitive. They every, Everyone thinks that their team is their team and they'll do whatever it takes to um, stand by them. And uh, coupled with the tailgating aspect with, you know, in my opinion, a lot of people drink alcohol at those. It, it could heighten those types of emotions. And definitely, I think that's why people end up getting violent over sports. I definitely agree with that, Alyssa. A lot of people do get into their tailgating because they're gun ho for sports. So how do you think the death of Jonathan Diver or the beating of Brian Stowe in 2011 have touched MLB fans today? I think that it wasn't just MLB hit fans that that touched. I think that it hit everyone. You know, everyone is a fan of a, some type of sport, I think. And um, going to games as a fan, it ends up, you get nervous. You get nervous when you're in the stands. You get nervous walking to your car if your team wins or loses. And, and people get crazy sometimes. So I think it definitely has hit fans to make them maybe a little bit more nervous to go to games of those rivalry. You said that right. Crazy was the word. <laughs> what do you think sports organizations like the Dodgers and Giants might do to prevent this from happening in the future? To be honest, I think that there's nothing that they can do as far as preventing people from drinking prior to the game unless they crack down on tailgating in their lot. Um, I think that they could crack down maybe on selling alcohol inside their own stadiums. Maybe they have a limit as to how many people that they could bring, I mean, how many they could buy or purchase. But as far as that goes, everyone's, no matter what, a competitive, angry person is going to be competitive, angry competitive and angry without alcohol with alcohol so I think that it's just maybe limiting some of the 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 way that they how much they purchase I agree and a lot of fans have that whole fandom thing going on so they like to follow their teams and one more question for you what would you say to fans before they attend their next sporting event I would say just have fun. I know that I'm competitive, uh, my team's my team, but at the end of the day, it's a sport and it's not worth hurting someone or getting hurt over. It's, it's just a sport. So I would say just go out, have a good time because you're there to support your team and, and just have fun with the people that you go with and the fans around you who are rooting for the same team as you. Well, thank you so much for being with us here today in the studio, Alyssa. We really appreciate you answering those questions, especially those who want to know. Thank you. Thank you. The former Marine Corps Air Station, El Toro, is being transformed into the first great metropolitan park of the 21st century. Brett Shore gives us an inside look at the Orange County Great Park. Since last summer, the Great Park of Orange County has been expanding massively to one of the biggest parks in Orange County. Here's the latest of what's going on here at the Great Park. The Orange County Great Park is expanding with 30 acres of public space with the addition of the South Lawn Sports and Fitness Complex. Under construction since last summer, the Great Park has added fun features for the community to enjoy. The new sports facility includes four quality soccer fields with two fields that are synthetic grass. Other features include four full-size basketball courts, a new restroom, a new support center, and the planting of more than 300 trees. The visitor center pavilion was constructed with over 35 tons of structural steel. It provides visitors with a welcome first stop on visits for the ride on the Great Balloon Park and Carousel. Kaiser's Permanente's path takes visitors on a scenic journey around the north and south lawns. As you walk down the path, it offers you health and fitness information and markers to help joggers and walkers measure the distance along their run or walk. A pair of reflecting ponds and new wooden pier now welcome you at the entrance of the Great Park. The reflecting ponds connect to the historical timeline and link the South Lawn Sports and Fitness Complex with the Great Balloon Park. The reflecting ponds and additional stormwater retention ponds are the first water features at the Great Park. Now you can take an even more in-depth walk through history at the walkable historical timeline. 
that has been expanded featuring 162 significant historical events and serves as a natural connection between the Great Balloon and Reflecting Ponds Viewing Pier. We asked guests visiting the park what their favorite new features are. Here's what they had to say. Um, the new soccer fields are awesome. I really like the ponds. It's a really nice place to read a book and just relax and hang out. Well, it looks like the Great Park even got greater with all the new latest expansions and places to walk, sit, and enjoy the day with family and friends. Reporting from Irvine, I'm Brett Shore. It looks like that expansion has really paid off. What do you think? Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to check it out this weekend. It seems like a lot of fun. I agree. A meteor bright enough to light up the night sky. This was captured on camera in Greenwood, Indiana. The American Meteor Society keeps tracks of such things. They say shooting stars are seen more frequently around this time of year. Welcome back. In campus news, ASI kicks off midterms week with beer, root beer that is. Here's Jessica Lau with more on Cal State Fullerton's Blocktoberfest. ASI brings Germany to Fullerton as they host Blocktoberfest on September 26. Hundreds of students gather here after class to see this German themed event, which include root beer, green hats, and German music. It makes it a fun day for students, especially on midterms week. Students have the opportunity to have henna tattoos, Jenga, caricatures, and soft pretzels. There are even some off-campus organizations such as Halloween Hunt, Scooby-Doo, and Snoopy. As a new and unique addition to the block party, they have the first hot dog race in which students dress up in hot dog costumes and go through a series of obstacle courses to win a huge prize. Blocktoberfest not only promotes ASI features, but also TSU Underground, in which they have free bowling and billiards, as well as free food, such as this cake pop. ASI leaders have a purpose for making Blocktoberfest a big event to students. Just a really great way to promote what ASI can do for students here, but it also brings in other organizations to collaborate with this huge event. Um, so we have like the Titan Bookstore out, we have Daily Titan and uh, Titan Radio out today. Many participants in this event showed appreciation. The effort is really cool and it's really fun to see what they go through to make us feel like at home. ASI kicked off their block party 14 years ago and it continued to have a strong tradition of bringing students together. For more information on other ASI events, you can go online on their website at asi.fullerton.edu. With that being said, I'm going to enjoy this root beer. Reporting from OCN5, I'm Jessica Lau. Still ahead on OC News, health insurance will soon be available to everyone under what is called Obamacare. But what exactly is it? We'll have a full report. And later, getting kids to eat healthier just might work with a side of hip-hop. OC News will return after the break. Disaster strikes without warning. What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Welcome back to OC News. With 2014 just around the corner, people are frantically awaiting Obamacare to kick in, but most don't know exactly what it is. Here's Shannon Travis with more. Talking heads, attack ads, claims and counterclaims with enough distortions to make Pinocchio blush. But when you stop the noise over Obamacare, what is it? The president and many Democrats defend it. The Affordable Care Act is here to stay. 
Most Republicans denounce it. Obamacare is a train wreck. But love it or hate it, the law is set to roll out its most ambitious pieces. If you already have sufficient health insurance or Medicare, this doesn't affect you. But if you're among the roughly 48 million without health care, on your calendar Tuesday. You can start shopping for a plan at healthcare.gov. President Obama claims. It's like booking a, a hotel or, or, or a plane ticket. Competitive plans with Olympic names. Bronze is basic, silver, mid-range, and gold and platinum high-end plans. All must offer the same coverage. All will come with a monthly premium. What will differ, the deductibles and co-pays will vary, but President Obama says for many it will provide good health insurance for the price of your, of your cell phone bill or less. The administration puts that at roughly $100 or less per month, but that's if you qualify for tax breaks and subsidies because of income. Costs will also vary based on where you live. Choose by December 14th if you want your new health coverage to start January 1st. On March 31st, 2014, open enrollment ends and the penalties begin. If you don't have health insurance by then, you could be slapped with a fine, that controversial individual mandate. There will be no penalties for a limited few. In Washington, I'm Shannon Travis. To tell us about what's going on in other parts of the world, we hand it over to Jennifer Arias with a look at World News. An armed robbery in broad daylight, but in a fraction of a second, the assailant is disarmed and subdued. It's a mock exercise, part of a training drill for bodyguards at a Mexican security firm. Hands and eyes, hands and eyes. Victor Hugo Aguirre is a former officer in the Mexican Army with training in intelligence, tactics, and weapons. Nine years ago, he opened VIP Protection, a firm that provides security for foreign executives and high-profile clients. They say, okay, we need security. I need bodyguards. I need guards in my home. I need technology for my car. I need security measures in my home. VIP Protection is one of more than 500 security firms born out of a very real need in the business community one that just intensified due to economic growth. Aguirre's company even offers different kinds of armored vehicles. One recent innovation for the security company, vehicles fitted with panic buttons. Once activated, a panic button sends an alarm signal to a command center in Mexico City and teams are dispatched. Popes John XXIII and John Paul II will be declared saints in April, the Vatican said Monday. The announcement came after Pope Francis met with cardinals to discuss the planned canonizations of two of his predecessors. The ceremony will take place on April 27th. It will be the first time two popes will be canonized at the same time. To be named a saint involves a series of steps, but the qualifications are straightforward. According to the veteran Vatican analyst John Allen, the calls to canonize John Paul II began even before he had been buried. People attending his funeral in 2005 held banners saying Santo Subito, short for Make Him a Saint Now. Their call was heard. Bypassing the normal five-year waiting period, Pope Benedict the 16th set in motion the process to canonize his predecessor. John Paul is said to have miraculously cured Sister Marie Simone Pierre, a French nun stricken by Parkinson's disease, several months after his death. The church says the second miracle occurred when a Costa Rican woman with a brain aneurysm recovered after praying to John Paul. 30 tourists in London saw more of the city than they had planned Sunday when the amphibious vehicle they were in caught fire in the Thames River. Everyone managed to jump to safety. The bright yellow tour boats called Ducks were converted from crafts used in World War II. The boat's operator has stopped running the tours. People had to leap into the River Thames on Sunday after the amphibious tour boat taking them around London caught fire near Parliament. Amateur video showed several passengers jumping into the water as flames and smoke billowed out from the windows at the front of the London Duck Tours boat, a bright yellow vehicle that takes sightseers around the British capital by road and river. After reports of the fire were received late Sunday morning, firefighters, a police helicopter, and paramedics rushed to the scene. Several people were pulled from the water and the blaze was eventually extinguished. Police said all 28 passengers and two crew members on board the vessel were safe. No one was seriously injured, and three people treated at a London hospital for minor smoke inhalation ailments have all been discharged, London Duck Tours said. Most of the people on board the boat were foreign tourists. The company and the London Fire Brigade both said the cause of the blaze, which damaged one of one-third of the vessel, was so far unknown. 
How about a beer break to go along with midterms? <laughs> well, it's actually a root beer break. We'll explain. And a serving of hip hop goes a long way in helping kids stay healthy. OC News will be right back. Titan Radio is Cal State Fullerton's own radio station located in the basement of Public Library. Students can stop by and pick up an application during our burning hours. Anyone who has a computer and internet can listen to us www.titanradio.org. A lot of people who want to pursue TV and film usually start out in radio, so it's always a great opportunity. To help you say goodbye to one of to one of the best TV dramas out there today, Breaking Bad. Let's go to Seaman Saroff with news on the series finale and all your other entertainment news. With a recent Emmy win for Best Drama on TV, Breaking Bad came to its highly anticipated end last night. After five years, the AMC series aired its last episode, and prior to Showtime, the internet was buzzing with predictions about what would happen, which characters would survive, and of course, what would happen to Walt. I think, and, and the writers will tell you, you know, uh, you can't please all the people all the time, but they've done a great job. Uh, again, uh, Vince came to us years ago and he said, we're going to take Mr. Chips, a mild-mannered chemistry teacher, and we're going to turn him into Scarface. And I think for anyone who's up to speed on the series, he is uh, a bad guy and it's going to you know, end in a, an incredibly fitting way. And for the world of great television drama, another one bites the dust. Speaking of things leaving the small screen, Saturday Night Live is experiencing its own makeover as it goes out with the old and in with the new. New cast, that is. The 35-time Emmy Award-winning show is going into its 39th year with some less than familiar faces, half a dozen new faces to be exact. This is the largest group of newbie comedians to enter the legendary show at one time, but thankfully SNL has an uncanny ability to reinvent itself. Established comedians like Bill Hader, Jason Sudeikis, and Fred Armisen all said their goodbyes at the end of last season. Andy Samberg, who spent seven seasons on the show, has a few words of comfort for the newcomers who may be feeling a bit nervous to fill such big comedic shoes. You know, you come in and everyone's comparing you to what it's been before, it's been on for so long, everyone always thinks it was better just before what it is now until you figure out what it is now and the audience gets used to who you are. Moving from the small screen to the big screen, let's take a look at the box office recap for the weekend. Coming in at number five, pulling in a total of $9 million is Don John. Just ahead of Don John was Baggage Claim with $9.3 million. And starting off the top three with $10.3 million is Rush. Rush is based on the true story of the 1970s rivalry between Formula One race car drivers James Hunt and Nicky Lauda. At number two with $11.3 million is Jake Gyllenhaal and Hugh Jackman in Prisoners, the story of a desperate father going to extreme measures to protect his family while trying to find his missing daughter. And with this week's number one spot and a whopping $35 million, it's cloudy with a chance of meatballs too. An animated film starring Bill Hader of former SNL fame and fellow comedian Anna Ferris. That's going to do it for this week's entertainment update. Reporting for OC News, I'm Seema Saroff. Trying to get children to be more healthy can seem impossible, but what if you mix health with a little hip hop? We felt we felt this one. Cut your hands up! This event has all the makings of a hip hop show. Is that hip hop? Yeah! Everybody stands up. Stand An energetic up. MC. There's music. Dancing. Give Dr. Quinn a big round of applause, y'all. And a neurologist. You're a neurologist? Yes, I yes. am a neurologist. In a sound studio. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Did you ever envision this? This is just as much of a surprise for me as it is for everyone who knows me that I ended up doing work like this. His name is Dr. Olaji Day Williams, and the program he developed in conjunction with legendary rappers is called Hip Hop Public Health. 
It uses the beats and the allure of hip hop to do something revolutionary in the public health sphere. Get kids in the inner city to make healthier choices. Why did you think this would work? I think music is an extremely powerful medium. Um, you know, great poets have described music as being the bridge between heaven and earth, but I see music as the bridge between health education and the streets. The centerpiece of the interventions, whether it's in schools, summer camps, or online, is clever videos, like this one. About healthy food selection, using a traffic light analogy. You help write the, the music. I mean, <laughs> yes, I do get involved. Um, whether I'm sitting down with Chuck D and I'm explaining the traffic light food model, um, whether I'm sitting down with Doug and I'm just giving him a mini tutorial on stroke. And then there's usually a back and forth process until I'm happy and they're happy. Um, and when we find that balance. Hip hop public health began nearly a decade ago as a partnership between Williams and hip hop pioneer Dougie Fresh, also known as the human beatbox. They started with something that made sense for a neurologist, stroke. They say that the program worked, kids were recognizing symptoms, and even saving lives. That's when I really said to myself, well, you know, if it can do this within stroke, then potentially other content areas. This, is the song that we call this video is about exercise, followed by a set of beats. One, one, two, two, three, three, four. One, one. Breathe before the beats are up, you're exercising too hard. Don't breathe at all, you're not exerting enough. Take one breath, you're at the ideal level. This is a complex concept called anaerobic threshold, and it's been made more palatable for young people. So it's using hip hop in a positive way. And they're so excited about it that the, the parents have to get into it. You know, they were like, hey, play that, play that song. Let me hear that. You know, let me see that video. How many of y'all feel positive out there? Now hip hop public health is going national. An album that's been produced in conjunction with Michelle Obama's Partnership for a Healthier America releases September 30th. It includes even more genres, more songs to make healthy cool. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, CNN, New York. may not have a hip-hop public health show, but we do have Ashley Lamont here to give you tips on how to stay healthy on campus. Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about how we're going to keep those snacks. We're going to have those snacks from, from being hungry all the time. First of all, I have a trail mix with me, which is full of healthy fats and antioxidants and also vitamin C. What does it have? It has cranberries, walnuts, and, and some amazing almonds that have, which almonds have healthy fats and those healthy fats are great for your heart. Second option with me is a bar. Always do look for bars that are high in protein, low in calories, and definitely, definitely low in sugars. So with perfect option right here is an organic food bar that has is great in protein which has about 22 grams of protein and it's low on those calories and it's also very very healthy for you since it is raw and organic another bar that I have here with me it's a, a thin a thin think thin bar and also amazing on those protein that protein will keep your hunger level levels low and that's always good and I know those bars will not fill you up for a simple snack, so ch choose an apple or any kind of fruit that is high in fiber and keeps those hunger levels down. My third option is a Greek yogurt, and Greek yogurt is amazing. I don't know if you guys have been looking into health, health food and nutrition, but Greek yogurt is like the new finding of snacks. It's great for you. Why? Because it's high in protein, low in fat. Always do look for the Greek yogurt that is 0% in fat, that is plain, because you do want to add the flavor to it. You do not want to add that yogurt that is all sugary and it's no good for you, has those artificial flavors that are not going to do your body any good and are not going to bring any nutrients to your body. So do look for yogurt, a uh, Greek yogurt, plain, 0% in fat and add your flavor to it. What do I suggest for you to add? A dash of cinnamon, 
a fruit that helps you with, um, with fiber, any fruit, pineapple, um, apple, your choice or my, my favorite have to be fixed with, with Greek yogurt. Um, and yeah, that's my suggestion for you guys, Sharday. So Ashley, what do all these snacks have in common that keep us from overeating? Great question, Sharday. First of all, high protein levels. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I mentioned protein in this segment a lot. So keep those high pro look for high protein foods, low calorie foods, because if you want to keep your hunger levels down without the overeating and still be full, you need low, low, low calories, high protein. And remember to eat two to three meals a day, two to three snacks a day, and drink water, stay hydrated, because most of all, that's what's going to keep your, your hunger levels down. That's my biggest, biggest, biggest tip for you today. Thank you, Ashley. That was really helpful. For all of us here at OC News, I'm Sharday Valone. And I'm Shay Ross. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.